Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 3. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to today's episode where we get into January where we aren't going to make any January signings, I don't think at least for the time being, but we should be promoting some people from the B team and of course we are going to welcome back the guy who left last episode. Lepatra. He's back. He's here. Uh, he got recalled last episode and we asked for him back and they, they said yes. So he's here now. Before we go through the fixtures since you were last here, a few little things to talk about quickly. In between episodes, Malaga offered me an interview with them, which I, oh, I'd i love to take because Malaga are the, the city where I've got family living in Spain. So I'd love to actually you know, manage Malaga at some point. So it was quite tempting to, to do that, but I didn't do it, obviously, because this is the Lincoln Loco, not the Malaga Loco. We lost one of the Cipollinas. Roy Cipollina, unfortunately, is no longer the assistant manager because he is now the Betis B team manager, which is very sad. Uh, I wanted him to stay, but obviously he got a better offer, so Cipollina's gone. <laughs> it's very sad. But hopefully it won't be too sad because we did get our youth intake preview come through and it does look all right to be fair. It doesn't look too bad, so hopefully we'll get a good few players coming through. Speaking of those youth players, of course, you can get your name in the game as one of those players if you join the Patreon link down to that in the description, just as Mike Robinson and Vector have done in the past few days. Thank you ever so much to you guys. Massively appreciate it. It really helps out support the channel. So jumping properly into today's episode, since you were last here, we have played 10 league fixtures and one cup game. And as you can see, for the most part, it's gone really, really well. You were last here for the Newman Thea, Alcoyano and Espanyol B games, which of course we all won, which is fantastic. And we rounded off October with another win against Sporting Gajon B 2-1. In the grand scheme of things, actually, November was a poor month for us because we drew two of our games in there. One to Rayo Vallecano B and one to Atletico Belires, both 1-1 in those instances. But we did manage to pick up wins against Celta Vigo B and Betis B as well, of course. I think which is just before Roy Cipollina took the job, actually. So Roy Cipollina, we weren't managing against him just then. December, we unfortunately lost the game. We lost 2-0 to Orahula, who are the team just behind us in the league table. So that was a crucial game that we had to win. We didn't win it, which wasn't so good. But we did win every game since then. 3-2 against Real Mahada Honda. 5-2 against Melilia. 2-0 against CD Marino in the Copa del Rey first round. 2-1 against Ponte Vrada. And 3-0 against Villa Venice. Today, we've got two fixtures coming up. We've got a tie against Cordoba, who won this division last season in the Copa del Rey second round. So a team in the division above us who got promoted from this division last season. It'll be good to see how we fare against them, as well as playing against Mathieu fear in the league as well. Now those of you who've got a keen eye will notice that we have changed formation a few times in between episodes and I'll explain the reasoning behind this. So I've decided that when we play against teams who are as good as us or better than us, it's good to have shitty gel in that defensive sort of anchor role just to help out the defence a little bit. But when we're playing against teams who aren't so good, who we could be scoring plenty of goals past, we take shitty gel, we move them up front and then we bring on, instead of what we did, we'd move Raul Zabalaga up front and then bring Diaz on to the right wing because he's been progressing really well in training Juan Diaz and I want to get him playing a bit more. And the only way to get him playing more without dropping supposedly the best player in our team, Raul Zabalaga, is by moving him up front. So this is the, the compromise we've made and it's worked well for the most part. Diaz has been fantastic. He's played 12 games this season, six off the bench, six starts, five goals, four assists. He's been superb, so I want to keep him playing. He's also got potential to play in the league above us as well, so it makes sense to get him actually playing games to actually reach that potential, because we might need him next season. Zabalaga as well is a fantastic talent on the right wing and up front, and also has got potential to be a La Liga player in the future, not just La Liga too, so we need him to keep playing games to meet his potential. The thing is, he can't be the advance forward because that's what Raul Jr. does and he scores goals. 26 so far this season. The issue with Raul is though, apparently he's just not meant to be that good. Like you look at him and actually looking at him, you don't think he is a 26 goal a season striker at a minimum. If you look at his history, 
26 goals in the league this season, 35 the season before, 30, uh, 25 the season before that. He gets, he's getting better and better each year. But you look at his attributes and you see 12 finishing. Like That does not scream 30 plus goals a season. You look at his, his physicals, nothing there sort of stands out. His pace is 13, that's pretty average. Like I don't know how he does it really. And the coaches seem to agree. The coaches don't think he's actually a player capable of playing at this level yet. They say he's a Segunda B level striker which is the division below us, or the divisions below us, I should say, and there has potential to be a division player at this striker. Well done, Tom, messing words up again. His potential is to be a striker at this division's level. That's that's what he's meant to be. Anyway, I'm rambling on about these things a little bit too much. Uh, for the first game against Cordoba, we are going to play with a CDM because Cordoba are better than us. So we're going to bring, where is he, Shitajel back onto the pitch instead. And the starting lineup is, of course, Dekene, Javi Vasquez, Lepetra, who's now back, uh, Kahinde and Trilli, Shitajel, Scott Marshall and Tomic in the middle with Timo Wolf, Diaz and Raul Jr. starting up front. So this game against Cordoba should be actually quite a good test of our abilities. Cordoba obviously promoted from our division last season. They were the runaway winners. So they are very, very good. And they are currently, I think, 10th in the division above us. So they've had a great start to life in La Liga 2. But if we can get a good result against them, even win the game, potentially that would mean that we could be, you know, champions elect. You know, if we can get a win against a team in a better division than us who won this division last season... It will, you know, mean good things for us. It also means if we get promoted, we might actually be okay in the division above us. Although if we look at the match stats, 10 shots to zero shots so far suggest otherwise. Fortunately for us, there were no highlights in that first half. And instantly, uh, three minutes into the second half, here is a highlight, which we have won possession of as Raul Jr. into Diaz, Diaz into Tomic, into Trilli. Or if we can just get that ball into the middle, that might have been okay, but we couldn't get the ball into the middle. Instead, Cordoba to score at the other end. So, not ideal, obviously, as you can tell. Uh, we are we are 1-0 down now, and maybe this isn't going to be the fairy tale. Was it even a fairy tale? We got to the fourth round last season, I think. That's not quite a fairy tale. It might be the fifth round, actually, of uh, the Copa del Rey. Uh, this season, the second round looks like it's going to be the furthest we get to, as a free kick for Cordoba is oh, almost put in the back of the net. Trilli on a 5.9. He's had a terrible game, clearly, as Lepetra puts the ball forward to Raul Jr., who wins it, but it goes on to absolutely no one. We do win possession back, but again, the clearances aren't particularly good. We are panicking a bit at the back by the looks of things, by just hoofing it clear, as opposed to actually taking a, a moment to look for a pass. That's what I want from the boys, a moment to look for the pass, to build out from the back slowly, as Cordova put the ball in the middle, and they've nearly got another. 20 minutes to go, let's make changes then. Let's get Trilly off the pitch for Josh Thompson. Uh, Raul Jr. having a very poor game, so Raul Zabalaga on you come instead. And Juan Diaz also having a terrible game. So we might actually bring Raul on for Juan Diaz and then bring Kike on for uh, Raul. Uh, for, who, who, who am I talking about? It's not even that confusing. I've, I've just, I've got very confused by that, but we've, I, I can't, that went from 0 to 100 very quickly. Uh, I don't know why I got so lost with that, but Kike, he's come on the pitch and he scored. So, result. 1-1 one, one then, with uh, 12 minutes to go in this game, plus added time, as uh, Zabalaga into Tomic. Tomic coming forward, brushes off a challenge into Kike again, and the super sub can't get another. Suddenly, though, we are really ignited. Let's go a bit more attacking, and let's shout demands more from the team, as the corner comes to absolutely nothing, unfortunately. But Timo Wolf ball forward again, comes to nothing. Harper on the ball, though, for... Oh, well, that was a very quick highlight. All it was was a little pass forward into Harper, and then and then they scored. Oh, you hate to see it. Is that Jack Harper? The Jack Harper that used to play for Malaga. He was very, very good for Malaga. Uh, too good for them because when they got relegated, he left. Or was he there for the first season after they got relegated? I, I Honestly, I can't remember. Either way, uh, with three minutes to go, we are down. Uh, and Jack, it is Jack Harper. Puts the nail in the coffin. You hate to see it. Played for Real Madrid, apparently, Jack Harper. And then uh, he left Real Madrid to go to Brighton. Because you can tell I was Googling him earlier on, to be fair, can't you? But he was at Real Madrid. Real Madrid wanted to loan him out. He said, no, I don't want to go on loan. So he left the club instead, thinking he'd go and just slot into a you know a first-team spot in the Premier League at Brighton. He didn't, and then went to Malaga. 
didn't get into their first team until they got relegated uh, and now he's on loan at Cordoba so he's not had a great career well actually saying that he's had a great career he played for Real Madrid as a 13 year old to like 19 years old I don't know either way he's had a good career still much better than my career in football which was Netland under 12s Timo Wolf though he's had a good career seven goals this season now he's starting to rack them up unfortunately that might just be a little too little too late unfortunately it is a little too little too late as the offside lines are still on the pitch apparently which is interesting uh, dressing room we've lost that one but not by much. I think we can be kind of pleased. Hopefully we can bounce back against Mathia where hopefully we will get a nut. Hopefully we'll bounce back against Mathia where we're going to go back to the two striker system. I've also actually, while I think about it, been trying to loan out some of our players in the B team and actually our first team as well, trying to get them out on loan. No one wants them. I don't know why no one wants our players because I, I want them. I just want them elsewhere for now. But they are good players. So I don't really know why clubs, like no clubs are interested in them whatsoever. Jez Finley coming back from actually quite a long-term injury that for the entirety of last episode. Uh, Jez Finley, I feel, is the most unlucky player in the team, actually. Every time a centre-back gets injured, or in the last case, uh, La Petra leaving the club to go, you know, go back to his parent club for two months and then come back to us, uh, I want, I give the opportunity to Jez Finley. He either gets red-carded uh, and misses a few games and then someone else comes in, plays well, keeps their space, or he gets injured and doesn't get into the team, obviously. So Jez gets very unlucky. Either way, for this game, uh, Shita Gel is going to come off the pitch and we're going to swap him for Raul Zabalaga. That's the only change we'll make. Let's go. So kickoff is upon us here today once again. This time, hopefully, we will be picking up the three points. I did actually forget to show you the league table earlier on. That's one of the things I neglected to show you. Uh, we are top of it still, which is fantastic, uh, by I, I, three or four points. I think it's four points we are top of the table by right now. And it could be more if Raul scores. He doesn't score. Yes, as you can see, we are five points technically right now, but Orahula haven't kicked off yet their game with the early kickoff. So, uh, ordinarily, that is four points clear of Orahula. So, we are looking pretty good at the top of the table. I'll be honest, I am very surprised that we've managed to keep this going this season. I knew one of the issues that we had was defensively. Uh, last season, we had obviously the philosophy to score one more than you. That was our whole philosophy last season. Whereas this season, it's to try and beat every team 1-0 and yet we are scoring plenty of goals, which is very nice. So we have shored things up defensively, which is great. And we are still scoring plenty of goals too, which is also great. I'll be honest, I am still expecting the bubble to burst because I don't I don't think we deserve to be this high up the table yet, but we're here we're here for a reason, I suppose, aren't we? So we can't be, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't know what I feel, really. We shouldn't be here, but we are here. So it's good, but it's also kind of not good because we shouldn't be here. And that means if we do get promoted, it's going to be terrible because we will really suffer next season. We might even suffer now as uh, Mathia go 1-0 ahead in the 39th minute. But don't panic because we are a second half team. Juan Dia is actually looking uh, very, very tired. He must have taken a bit of a knock. So we might take him off in the second half. In the meantime, in the dressing room, I'm going to throw a water bottle, actually, and say I'm far from pleased from you, but I do expect a performance because we are a second-half team. Javi Vazquez, this time, is the player on a 5.9. Uh, our full-backs are just having atrocious games, but actually there is a bit of an issue in-game with full-backs and they're not getting very good ratings for some reason. It's a little bit weird as a straight red card for Scott Marshall is going to make things even more difficult for us now. <sighs> I think Raul Junior's not played brilliantly, so let's get him off the pitch instead. Bring him back down. Bring him down here, please. There we go. Raul Zabalag will be the lone striker. We're going to take Raul Junior off for Andre Shitigel. Javi Vazquez will come off for Ethan Brito. I'll be honest, today... We might not be a second half team because we are struggling a little bit out there. Uh, a goal kick for Mathia. Come on, boys. Let's win the header. We haven't won the header. Let's win the challenge. We've not won the challenge. Let's not concede a goal. We nearly did concede a goal. Whilst I think about it as well, uh, Diaz is injured. Off you come for... Ah, oh, this is the issue now, isn't it? I mean, Timo Wolf can kind of play there, so we'll bring Daz Finley on the left. I thought we had Casado on the bench, but we don't, so we, we obviously can't bring him on. Tomic on the ball for us, though. If we can just get a draw out of this game as opposed to losing it, that would be fantastic. I, I'd take that as a result with, you know, down to 10 men and not playing particularly well after a defeat to Cordoba as well. You know, morale will be down a little bit as Brito's clearance was terrible and I, we've nearly conceded it again. Have we actually seen any chances for us in the second half? 
Uh, I don't think we have done, which is slightly worrying because we are a second half team. I don't know if I mentioned that before to you, but we are a second half team and Dekene is clearly a second half goalkeeper because he's made some great saves. Tell you what, we're down to 10 men, but still let's go more attacking. Let's say demands more. We can get something out of this. What that something will be, uh, I don't know yet. It might be zero points. It could be one point, it could be three points, but with 15 minutes to go, Mathia on the counter attack looking to break forward with a bit of pace. The ball in the middle is good. And again, they, how many chances do they need? Really, Mathia should be home and dry at this stage. They should be home and dry, but they're not. But with five minutes to go, it might just be enough for them as we can't seem to score a goal. And today's episode, a little bit of a disaster, actually, on the grounds that we've lost both games today. Uh, and that's, we've not had back-to-back -back losses at all this season. Um, this will be the first time we've had back-to-back. -back. It won't be the first time we've had back-to-back -back losses. You love to see it. We've picked, it's disallowed. We've not seen a replay or anything like that. But it, it's, oh, it's, now it's showing me the replay. That was very, very weird. Oh yeah, to be fair, he is offside. You hate to see it. From pure relation to back-to-back -back losses, that's depressing. Wow, so that's the first real blot on our record this season. Uh, two wins, two losses, sorry, on the bounce. Let's not do that again. Uh, next episode, we're going to come back for Rayo Vallecano B and Real Sporting Gajon B. I think we'll come back for those two next time and then we'll do the final run of games into the season should we need to. So thank you very much for watching today's episode. Despite the poor results, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Of course, if you have done, drop a like on today's video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.